Oh, wet straps again. Welcome to the Warrior Woodshop. We are back outside for another one of our trailer projects. This is our deck over gooseneck that we use to pick up lumber when we help build decks, large amounts of lumber for the woodshop, or on the no school days, we have some fun with our ATVs and UTVs. One of the problems we have is securing things down. Well, it's not really securing it down, it's what you do with these to, I mean, most of us just throw them in the back of the truck. And today, like it is a rainy day, they're soaking wet, it's time to get ready to haul it. It's like, ugh. So what we have is a couple of five foot side boxes for a pickup truck. We have to go with side boxes on this trailer because we don't have the depth of a dually that a semi truck would have and to put true under bed storage boxes. So if you're going to do this project, make sure you measure the depth from your uh, I-beam to the outside of the trailer, which in our case was about 13 inches. We've got a couple of 12 inch deep side boxes. Typically the truck boxes are 18 to 24. You know, if you can make them work with yours, great. What we're gonna do is inside, out of the rain, we're building a couple of these L-shaped brackets, or technically four, we're gonna do one on each side. And then gonna secure them to the trailer when it's not raining. So that'll be a part two of this video. All right, here we are in, inside the Warrior Workshop now out of the rain. Uh, off camera, we've gone ahead and uh, welded together our four L brackets. And I use a notch method rather than a 45 because one, I don't trust my uh, cutoff saw. And two, in my opinion, it gives three uh, areas of, or lines to weld. So this has about three inches of weld line where if it was only a 45, it only have two inches, maybe two and a half. So that's why I do that. The next thing we're gonna do is take and clean up some of those welds, but also take this one by uh, eighth inch and literally make a diagonal brace. I have a feeling that this will be strong enough, but I don't wanna rely on three inches of welds plus what's attaching it to the trailer to hold up hundreds of dollars worth of straps. So if we can add a total of a $12 piece of metal to a $3 bracket right here to save hundreds of dollars worth of straps and chains, I think it's worth it because the time to put it on doesn't, isn't really that much. So the biggest thing you want to do is make sure everything's square as you're building it. Your sizes are correct. I actually had to add about an inch and a half because of the frame rail. The trick that saved me here was one of these magnets to help keep it square, and then I double checked it with a traditional tri square. All right, so there's our end bracket. We're going to do one more thing to give us a little bit more of assurance that we're not going to lose our box. Because the way our I beam is set up, we're going to have a weld across the top and a weld across the bottom, and that's holding up a 50 plus pound box plus all the straps. So probably a couple hundred pounds or more of stuff that's worth hundreds of dollars. So probable isn't enough of a guarantee for me. I want to increase my odds. And what we're going to do is take a piece of angle iron at the appropriate height, weld it all the way underneath the I-beam, weld it to both these pieces. The situation we're running into is our strap is now an eighth of an inch further out. I could do a bunch of notching on here, but since we have some scrap of the strap left over, I'm just picking a three inch piece. I'm going to weld it there so that way when this goes on there, everything sets straight and square. Makes it the L brackets from angling out are not fitting properly. So let me get that part done and then we'll have to call it quits for the day because at that point it'll be ready to paint and the rain doesn't seem to be letting up. So let's get this part done and we'll come back when when it's not raining outside and after the paint's dry. Alright, now that the rain's let up, got nice blue skies. We're under the trailer. 
Here's our completed bracket for the left side. And we'll need to position that right there. And can't be a warrior wood shop video without throwing some wood into the pitcher. And that'll give us, this is about an eighth of an inch taller than the uh, actual toolbox itself. The other thing we're gonna do is make sure it's square. And then I'll show you a couple tricks. So right now what we're gonna do is take some paint off. We'll come back, that way we've got something to weld to. All right, we're working solo, so we gotta figure out how to get this attached. So I got some scrap of that angle iron that I just built the thing out of, the bracket. And we're gonna hang this temporarily flush with the front. That then allows me to take a second vice grip clamp and clamp that to that. A couple things we need to check for is height and squareness. Again, we're about an eighth inch extra there. And square. So now what we'll do is we'll get the welder out, we'll tack these, and then get rid of that brace and finish welding it off. Here's where that spacer comes in. It keeps everything lined up there. And that way that can be squared up, flushed up with the back. Clamped into place. That's square. The box is able to be removed if it needed to be. And let's get that welded into place. Warrior Woodshop alum, Jake. Is, who helped us out on the fifth wheel camper to utility trailer project is back to help us with some of the welding on this project. Just a little FYI, anytime you're welding on a trailer, you should not have it connected to the vehicle. The ground of the high arc welder will go through the vehicle's battery. If you're welding on a camper slash toy hauler that has a battery, make sure you disconnect it. Well, after a long day in the books, the rain seemed to cooperate and get out of the way for us. We're able to get this one done. Well, hopefully you got something out of this, how we would do uh, brackets on a trailer or, or toolboxes on a trailer. Uh, when we do one of our camper conversions to a utility trailer, we'll do a toolbox on the front. So I'll be watching for that one maybe later this summer. Uh, if you haven't done so, we're subscribe. We're the Warrior Wood Shop. We do mostly woodworking, but we also get outside and do some trailer some deck building and some basement remodeling occasionally along the lines. And hit that bell notification, leave a comment. Uh, let me know if you got pictures of yours being done. I'd like to see what else anybody else has done. So again, thanks for watching. Now go out and make some sawdust.